It began before dawn, early Sunday morning. Yes, get me golf board, civil affairs. Yeah. Wade, Bill Telson, Mobile Weather Bureau. Yes, Mr. Bill. Hate to wake you, but Camille's changing course, turning north, north now, instead of east. Looks like she's going to hit you right where you live. For 24 hours, the whole Gulf Coast has been on hurricane watch, people sleeping at their posts. And now... Harrison County in civil defense to Biloxi CD. Come back, please. Yes? Yeah. Mobile weather says it's coming. Wake everybody up. For three days now, a new hurricane's been running loose along the southern coast. A lady called Camille, supposedly headed toward the Florida Panhandle. But, like any lady, perfectly capable of changing her mind. The 7 a.m. bulletin from the Weather Bureau. Camille, a small but extremely dangerous storm, is now shifting westward, moving toward the Mississippi coast. Small craft should seek safe harbor. In Gulfport and Biloxi, the emergency operating centers already have been put on full alert by Wade and Julia Geis, a husband and wife team, both local civil defense directors, Wade for Harrison County, which covers most of the Mississippi coastline, and Julie for Biloxi, its largest city. The hurricane flags go up. The warnings go out. The Red Cross shelters are now being opened in Bay St. Louis, past Christiane, Gulfport, Long Beach, and Biloxi. Bring your garbage cans inside. Secure everything that's movable. All windows should be nailed and boarded. Tides of 15 feet are expected. All residents of the low-lying areas are advised to evacuate by noon today to Hattiesburg or Jackson. Transportation will be provided and shelter. Please bring all the things you'll actually need in shelter. Most people take the advice to get out, and cars start streaming north. Sunday afternoon, Camille brushes past the mouth of the Mississippi. At first, she only blows a few shingles off the roofs. Then she begins ravaging the whole Louisiana Delta. Upriver, the levees are beginning to crumble under pressure of wind and water. Finally, at Burris, the levee breaks. Time to get out. And now the few who lingered are running for their lives, north to New Orleans and safety. By late afternoon, advance winds are touching the Mississippi coast. The slow pokes are still gassing up. And civil defense workers and local police are going door to door, trying to rout the stragglers out. No, we're not getting out. Well, then, would you give me the names of your next of kin? Say, so you're serious about this, aren't you? Mister, I've never been more serious in my life. Martha, let's pack up. But we'll get up on the third floor. The water won't get that high. But if the first and second floor go, the third floor is coming down. <laughs> Excuse Hi, me. Hi, pal. <laughs> come in, come in. Welcome to the hurricane party. A hundred thousand people have listened and left. Left behind, the young who think nothing can ever hurt them. The unbelievers who plan to ride it out. The sightseers, the thrill seekers, the stubborn. It's now 6.30 p.m. Sunday in Biloxi, Mississippi, and the hurricane is really beginning to be felt here. As you can see, the palm trees are blowing, the rain is beginning to increase, and the sea is beginning to churn in the Gulf. It promises to be a long, long night 
in Biloxi. See the office to rescue White. We have a call on Sandy Hook Road at Henderson Point. Three subjects trapped in automobile. In Gulfport and Biloxi, half a dozen trained volunteer rescue teams in heavy duty trucks and ducks are answering the first calls for help. We need an ambulance at the Nickel School shelter to pick up an expectant mother. Uh, take her to the hospital. By 8 o'clock, power lines are falling, starting fires, and winds are whipping them out of control. Even in New Orleans, on the outer edge of the storm, Camille's beginning to cause problems. Along the industrial canal, another levee breaks, begins flooding part of the city. in Biloxi now, and the eye of the storm, they say, is still over two hours away. But the wind is so strong, one can hardly stand up in it. The rain is torrential, streets are flooded, we are cut off from the outside world in our motel here. There is no power, everything is black. Rescue red to CD control. Already one of Gulfport's heavy-duty rescue teams is in trouble. What's your 10 20? Rescue Red has gone out on one mission too many. Their truck is swamped in the rising tide. To hell with the radio and the equipment. Abandon your machine. Power poles are falling. Live wires sizzling in the streets. Staying out now is suicide. Rescue Blue and White, come home. All rescue units, come home. <laughs> At 11 o'clock, a huge tidal surge rises in front of the storm, 20 to 30 feet high. It sweeps inland with irresistible force, smashing boats, collapsing buildings, wrecking everything in its path. At midnight, the eye of the hurricane crosses east of Bay St. Louis, and winds of 200 miles an hour complete the destruction. Outside, in the wind and water, People are dying, but now there's nothing anyone can do. They called it the American Riviera the loveliest beach in the South. Now. Hurricane winds seldom top 120 miles an hour. Camille's have reached 200, tornado intensity, but cutting a wider swath than any tornado that ever lived. From Biloxi to Bay St. Louis, everything's in shambles. Down the delta, it's not much better. In Buras, where the levee broke, there were 6,000 homes. Now, only six are fit to live in. Everything's flooded out. Even the graveyards are six feet under. the damage is enormous, but the casualty list is low. Mississippi's losing on every count. Survivors are stumbling out of the shelters, still dazed by what they've been through. And it's seeing how little is left. It's bound to be in here somewhere because all these are the houses that came from in this vicinity. They're all right in here in this neighborhood. But mine was right on the corner, not on any of the <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
<laughs> that great when you under that smile. <laughs> Some are lucky, others less so. You can't imagine devastation as complete as this. When we came over Monday, we thought we were going to still find our home. When we walked up the street and saw it level, we knew that whoever stayed would not be here. Here lie the Richelieu apartments in Pass Christiane, where some of the tenants refuse to get out. But we'll get up on the third floor. The water won't get that high. <laughs> come in, come in. Welcome to the hurricane party. 24 people decided to ride it out at the Richelieu. 23 died when the building collapsed. One youngster floated out a third floor window on a mattress and lived. The man on the second floor, he had a drink and he told me to come on up and join the party that they were gonna stay on the third floor. And I told him, no, this was too serious. I told him to get out. He said, uh, the man said, well, this is my property and if you're gonna arrest me, go ahead and arrest me. So I called a civil defense man and the last thing he told me was to go back and get his uh, address of the next of kin so we can notify him. And uh, the man, he looked at me and he laughed. Now, Camille's almost become a forgotten woman. She whips through northern Mississippi at a furious pace and then slows down. Becomes just a heavy thunderstorm as she crosses into Tennessee. Then, she turns east toward the Appalachians and the Atlantic. The storm rises over the Blue Ridge Mountains, runs into cold air, and torrential rains start falling. More than 27 inches in less than six hours. Two to three feet of water for every inch of land. And suddenly, flash floods are roaring down every hill and hollow, starting landslides, smashing houses, burying people in their sleep. In the morning, every river in central and western Virginia is in full flood. The tide, the buffalo, rockfish, greenbrier, the big and little canals. Waynesboro is under eight feet of water. Glasgow and Scottsville, 14. In Richmond, Governor Godwin puts state civil defense in charge of all rescue and relief operations, backs them up with all the state's resources, beginning with the National Guard. The mountains tell the story. Every ravine scarred by landslide, every valley a mass of mud. And under the mud, the dead. A dozen hamlets like Davis Creek, Tyro, Massey's Mill are almost wiped out. It just came down through this area, just like an ocean wave, more or less. And it, these people right in here, they just didn't have a chance. and just took every, all these houses through here. How many are dead or missing here in Massey's Mill? There are total count of 23 gone. She asked me, I've been looking at a dozen two times. If a little house is gone, when did it go? I told her it's been gone a long time. And was anyone living in the house? Yes, and there was uh, uh, Oliver Boy and his wife and two little children. The little children, they got drowned. Bridges are out, highways buried. In many places, there's no way in except by helicopter. At first, everyone's going in circles. Then quickly, it straightens out, and help begins pouring in. All the smaller streams keep pouring water into the great historic river of Virginia, the James. And from Lynchburg to Richmond, the cities downstream are in the deepest danger they've known in a century. Sandbagging works. Some water backs up into Richmond through the sewer system, floods the low-lying areas, but the levees hold. One night of rain in the mountains has cost 106 lives. More than 75 are still missing. Almost as many lost as in Mississippi. 
but through quick work by disaster units, only two more people have died in the enormous floods that followed. In Mississippi... Gulfport clearly accepted the brunt of this storm. This downtown area, as you can well see, looks like a nuclear holocaust was here. There's nobody here yet because the National Guard and the state police are not yet letting anybody in. How many bodies have you found so far? This makes 19 for us. I the coroner's report last night, about 8 o'clock, was 88 confirmed in Harrison County. Navy Seabees and Civil Defense Rescue Teams are combing the backwoods for more. Chief of Command Post, we've been getting rumors that there's bodies hanging in the trees at Cat Island. Could you send a chopper to check it out? Up and down the beach, Coast Guard planes and choppers are searching the waters offshore for bodies. No one knows how many have died. There's no water except from broken mains, with the inevitable threat of typhoid. We need water, and I don't care what you put it in. Milk bottles, wine bottles, beer cans, anything. No power, no food, no nothing. Suddenly, a thousand problems are overwhelming the few who have to meet them. Ask him to please contact the Biloxi Police. See if they can get a hold of them. Our radio's out. We cannot notify the law authorities here. Uh, Governor's Mansion, the Harrison Civil Defense. Did uh, Henry Carroll tell you about this man in Connecticut who's sending some water purifiers down? All righty. I got a message for Colonel Dent, State Civil Defense Director. Wade, do you have a 30K three-phase generator uncommitted? Careful, Skipper. We're uncrating one now. Hey, look, I can't find your truck here, buddy. Oh, I, I don't need it. I don't need to got one. Oh, you lucky dog. Okay, if you can use them, we can get two units coming in from Pennsylvania with heavy-duty rescue trucks, generator, high-intensity lights, and 25 to 30-man crew. Yes, we need rescue units, but trained, self-contained rescue units. We can't feed them, we can't sleep them, and tell them to bring their own water. Ten for them. Helps a coming. In New Orleans, a Rampart Street parade to collect money for the hurricane victims. From California, Florida, a dozen states, food and clothing are being airlifted into Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi. Volunteer rescue teams are coming in from everywhere. But more important in the long run, Air Force Two is bringing in the Vice President, Secretary Romney, and the head of the Office of Emergency Preparedness, George Lincoln, who will have the job of coordinating all federal assistance to the stricken areas. To meet the governors, John McKithen of Louisiana, John Bell Williams of Mississippi, and try to get things moving. House trailers for the homeless, food for the hungry, medical supplies, emergency generators from civil defense, a thousand other things. From Washington, John E. Davis, National Director of Civil Defense, comes in to confer with Governor Williams and local CD officials. Soon the President will fly in too, from the Western White House. Mississippi, Louisiana, Virginia, and part of West Virginia have all been declared major disaster areas and will get all the help the government can give them. In the Delta country, they're still flooded out. In Virginia, cleanup's already begun. Oh, well, I'm not really down, I don't think. Uh, just a little wet, covered with mud. But I hope everybody in town sort of takes it on the chin and starts all over again. It's going to be tough. I don't know whether everybody can afford it or not, but I'm going to give it a whirl. What are you going to do for money? 
Who needs money? <laughs> Just a lot of hope, right? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of credit, I hope. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Why is that? I don't know. Mississippi is still in the worst shape of all. But food and clothing are pouring in, being distributed by Red Cross and Salvation Army. What are you looking for now? I'm trying to find me some birches, but I don't know where to start looking. You ever think you'd be out here looking for clothes in a gymnasium? No, sir. I never thought I'd ever, ever do it. So you lost your shirt. What now? I don't know. Start over again. I got the clothes I got on and $22 in my pocket. <laughs> and if I'd have had a choice, I'd have picked some better clothes. Thousands are homeless, have to be evacuated north to Hattiesburg or Jackson. The sick and injured are being airlifted out. yet how many have died, or why they ignored the warnings and stayed behind. Mister, I don't know why they stayed, but I know why I left. I kept this thing 200 miles behind me, and I'll do it again. I won't ever stay and wait to see what's going to happen. And this is my first hurricane. I didn't know enough to get out. This is my last time I'm going to sit down here. This is the most stone. This is my last one. And my house was under 12 feet of water. And I've seen that every, about all my family has had destruction of their homes. And, it, and we, and I'm never, I hope I never see nothing like this again. I might have young, but it, it takes this hard blow. Can you understand the why storms. anybody would stay here? Does that make sense to you? No, not, certainly oh, not know. now. I look at all this, I kind of wish I'd stuck around and gone with the house. Others mean to hang on. And uh, did you weather the storm in your house? Yeah, we'll never do it again, I'll tell you that. What happened when the roof came off? <laughs> I almost had all the attack. It was awful. And uh, you plan to rebuild and move back to Bay St. Louis? Yes, well, that's my home. Do you plan to rebuild or what will you do now? Well, there's nothing else to do. This part of my house still there. So I have to go back. That's all we have. I have a blind husband, and that's our roots. But there's one thing for sure. We will re we'll rebuild. Yeah. We've got a beautiful country down here. We'll make it beautiful again. Nearly everyone along the beachfront has been wiped out, their houses wrecked or vanished. Some have lost everything, including hope. But surprisingly, on every third or fourth lot along the beach, American flags are being planted, flying defiantly. Maybe to tell the world, we aren't down yet. Now people are beginning to pick up the pieces. What are you looking for down there? Money and uh, uh, all sorts of things like uh, spoons, forks, and knives, parts of mirrors, parts of plates, razor blades. Have you found anything? Yep, money. Spoons, razor blades. How razor much money did you find? Four ninety-eight. How long are you going to keep digging? Till I have to go home. The monstrous job of cleanups begun, and more than eight thousand military men, army, CBs, National Guard, Corps of Engineers, airmen from Keesler Field, are pitching in to help out.
It's been seven long days since thousands of rescue workers have seen a bed, or their homes, or their wives. Julie, you still laying? How are you, honey? Tired. It's Saturday night, and it's been one hell of a week. Let's go home. Sunday. One week since Camille swept over the Gulf Coast and then went on to die somewhere out in the Atlantic. And the survivors are gathering in the ruins of their churches. We come to mourn those we have lost and to give thanks, we who are left, for whatever we do have left. For many, what's left is little indeed. Rebuilding is bound to take years, and for some, it seems an almost impossible task. I don't know if it'll ever be built back. So I think it'll just be like a dream to us. It'll never be the same. But others know better. We'll rebuild, just build a little stronger. We got a beautiful country down here. We'll make it beautiful again. You've seen what happened. I saw it too when I flew in immediately after. But the shock on the scene is a thousand times greater than it seems on the screen. Suddenly it hits you and it hurts. You realize the wreckage, the tragedies and suffering are all real. Not just pictures in the evening newscast or headlines in the morning paper. And you also realize how much worse it would have been if a few dedicated people like Weather Bureau, state and local officials, and these local civil defense directors hadn't made thorough plans to meet this kind of disaster. Hundreds died because they refused to heed the warnings, but no one will ever know how many thousands were saved along the coast because there was adequate warning, because there were detailed evacuation plans, heavy duty rescue teams trained by civil defense, ready to risk their lives in the storm, and enormous help after from scores of volunteer groups, thousands of military men, and coordinated government assistance. Hurricanes like Camille don't happen every day, but other disasters do. Fires, tornadoes, several hundreds of them a year. I'm John Davis, National Civil Defense, and that, of course, makes disaster my business. Business, too, because someday it could happen to you. Remember, Preparedness can save lives, and so can you, perhaps your own, simply heeding the warnings. 